Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Grafana Office Hours. I'm Nicole van der Hooven, Developer Advocate at Grafana Labs, and I'm here with my colleague over there, Paul, who is yeah. technically on PTO right now. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I just had to come and show up for this because I'm interested in the topic. So yeah, it's like I can't stay away. What a nerd. <laughs> 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 All right, and down, oops, down, you would think I would get this right by now. Down there is Matt Nolf. He's a, a new person, a new colleague that I haven't had on here yet. Matt, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us how long you've been at Grafana and what you work on? Yeah, sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so I'm Matt. I'm based in the UK, in the Northwest, in Manchester, and um, been at Grafana for about two and a half years. Um, and so I work in the Infra Oli squad we have here, or Infrastructure Observability, I should say, uh, the, the proper name. Um, and we sort of, we like sit on top of the database. So Grafana builds these amazing, really powerful, you know, open source databases. Uh, and we sort of build solutions and products that sit on top of those things. So making them, you know, easier for people to use if they don't have as much knowledge about the specifics or how to run them and things like that. Um, and yeah, so we kind of, build on top of those things. Uh, and so I've been doing that for pretty much the entire time I've been here. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. and I'm sure the, the question that everybody's coming in for, if, uh, you know, if I can interject here, Manchester United or oh, Manchester yeah. City? Yeah, I, knew, I as soon as you said you were asking that or asking a question everyone wanted to know, I knew it was going to be that. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, man. so this is like a it, sports thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah. it's a whole a football thing as well. Yeah, um, uh, no, not really too into foot into football, but yeah, my friends would kill me if I didn't say it was Manchester City. So all right, but, but personally, you know, I'm not too fussed. Hey, I actually sport sometimes. Last Friday, no, last Sunday, I sported. <laughs> I did the Bayern Munich match against Freiburg. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know, I can I can sports sometimes, nice. occasionally. <laughs> you're, you're, I got you the the, the, shirt, the, the jersey ball. to to prove it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ball was kicked. Um, <laughs> lots of yelling occurred, and we won. And my hair matches yeah. the team colors. So yeah. <laughs> Nice. Anyway, we're we're here to actually do some work, Paul. You oh, know, so sorry. Like... <laughs> we're not all on PTO, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, not. Matt, why don't you actually back us away from this this hole that Paul has dug for us and mm -hmm. talk to us about what what even is um, instrumentation? Yeah, sure. Um... Well, instrumentation is sort of the idea of inserting into your application something that will output some signals about the sort of things that are going on within it. So whether it's the performance of your application or the state things are in or the outputs, uh, you know, or like the request outputs or something like that. It's a way of getting your application to output something that you can use to see what's going on. Um, lots of you know, there's lots of tools to help you do that. And lots of projects, big projects are sort of instrumented so that you can understand how they're performing and how they're running. Um, so, you know, Kubernetes, for example, is a big project that has instrumentation and you can, using the signals that it outputs, kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on. So it's really the idea of getting a bit of a looking glass into what's going on and, uh, you know, seeing what's going on instrumentation is the is a way you can do that a powerful way you can do that yeah okay and and so when we talk about monitoring in general i know like there are different ways there are different approaches to actually get data in general you as you mentioned um you want to be we want to be able to see certain signals of the application so that we know what's going on right and mm -hmm. instrumentation is one of those ways and requires usually some some sort of code um, that is specifically for exposing or sending some of those that information the telemetry telemetry 
But yeah. there are also ways that you can monitor an application without instrumenting, right? Right, yeah. So so as you said, like, you know, instrumenting is often a case of going into your application and changing some code, adding a, a third-party library, for example, or, you know, doing something that exposes those signals. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's very good. But sometimes you don't want to go in and make those changes, or sometimes you don't own the application or, you know, own the software. So you, you can't actually physically go in. So, you know, I think... It, I guess it depends what sort of questions you want to ask when you're monitoring the system. Like if you just want to know, for example, is my application running? Like you could use more of an external test, like, uh, you know, something that's just firing web requests like Pingdom or yes. Status Cake or yeah. synthetic monitoring that Grafana has. Oh, yeah. And that will sort of tell you from the outside, yes, my application is running or no, it's not. And, you know, things like that. And so you don't have to instrument your code there you're getting an answer, but it's a slightly you know, different perspective um, at the benefit of not having to you know, put code into your application. Um, and so it really depends what question you're wanting to answer around what is suitable. But if you wanted to not just understand, yes, my application is down, but why it's down, your know, instrumentation is a powerful tool to help you look inside and see what's going on. Yeah, that's one of the nice things too, like with the eBPF, which is kind of mm. the hotness these days again, um, you know. Yes. With- not having to touch the code, you know, it, it's it's kind of like uh, just observing from uh, without or what I don't know from the side. <laughs> yeah, sort of from the side or from the bottom. Yeah, I mean, yeah, eBPF is obviously new and exciting. I mean, I'm not an expert in that area, but um, yeah, that's another sort of way you can get signals from your application. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's so if we had to talk about different approaches to monitoring and different ways that you get that information, one is instrumentation, where um, usually you you have to have some code that specifically is exposing the telemetry. The second is eBPF, which works at a kernel level where it mainly takes advantage of some standards and and protocols so that it's listening for that rather than the specific implementation of those protocols. And then um, a third one is things like, I know it wasn't so long ago that, that, you know, the primary way that you would get insights into an application is doing like a, a t- oops, a top or a VM stat or something um, to get some sort of information. Uh, am I missing any other ways? No, I think that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they provide different viewpoints. So it says like, it depends how you want to slice and dice sort of the, the you know, the questions that you're asking, but yeah, I think they all provide different, yeah. different sort of like angles to look at, look at it. Okay, so how do agents fit into all of that? Are agents for all three of those or just some of them or are they something else entirely? Um, yeah, so so I guess like when your application is is emitting these signals, like it, it typically in a lot of cases like Prometheus, which is a big um, sort of name in the, is this ecosystem, they are um, pull-based. So your, your application is exporting these, these data points, but they're not really going anywhere. Like it's it's a case of you need to collect them, and often they're a point in time, right? So you need to collect them at an interval so that you can say at this time this was doing something, and then you'd, you'd look maybe a minute later or something like that. But um, you need to actually go and collect that data, and then often you mm-hmm. need to send it somewhere else, like Grafana, to visualize it. Um, and so agents are basically doing that job of sh- collecting your data, and yeah, maybe they will do some sort of pipeline modification or enrichment or something like that, and then send it to a place where you can aggregate that data and store it and and maybe query it as well. So the agents are doing that job of of actually pulling metrics from the places where they exist and sending them to the right place. Hmm. Um, And that's sort of the way like Prometheus, for example, works where you have to scrape those metrics. You have to collect them from your application Um, and you may have lots of applications. So you're scraping lots of different places and the agents kind of, you tell it, hey, I have this target that I want you to go and collect metrics from, and you can you can send it to this location. And that's sort of, you know, another application that you're running, like alongside your applications that do whatever your business is providing, like you have these sort of agents that are also there that will then collect your telemetries. Mm-hmm. Do agents always require instrumentation? Um, do you mean, what do you mean by that question? 
Um, in order for, because you, you talked about an agent being something that collects data and then sends it on to some other right. central repository. Um, do they need do they need for the application to be instrumented or the code to be instrumented in the first place before it can collect? Right. I think generally the the answer is yes. I mean, um, I, I'm not familiar with with all of the sort of solutions out there, but I think you know for the common cases um, like Open Telemetry or Prometheus um, or um, the the application, you know, there has to be some sort of common understanding of what. Mm -hmm the format of the data is, whether it be metrics like I've talked about or logs or traces, like the agent has to understand the, you know, sort of the, the metrics, the telemetry signals that are, that are being exposed, be able to understand those and then send them off to a place that also understands them. And so instrumentation, generally like the, the applications that we're talking about are normally instrumented. Um, and so, yes, I think it, for most cases, that is the case. Yeah. I think this point can be confusing because um, with, when it comes to instrumentation, you can manually instrument, but there's also now auto instrumentation. So it might mm -hmm. seem like, oh, I didn't need to instrument it, but actually um, it, it is already instrumented. You just didn't have to manually go and do right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So very good point. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times I even think about like too with the uh, you kind of mentioned about the logs. You know, if uh, the agent is sitting there collecting the logs, maybe or forwarding them, you know, it can create metrics based off of data that's in those logs. Mm. So that's another another bit of uh, you know metrics that uh, can be created and forwarded. Right. Yeah. I mean, for sure, they can be very smart and you know do lots yeah. of cool things like not just collecting data, but as I say, you can. You, know, you could drop certain things that you find actually aren't useful and there's no point sending or you can enrich like you've said and add further data based off of the things it's collecting yeah okay and and we have a question from kalyani sridhar kakade what is the advantage of having agents compared to agentless which you're already sort of getting into yeah so i guess you know this is something that we're, that we're definitely going to talk about so agents are things that you have to run like it's a it's another piece of software that you're going to run however you do that whether it be you know in a cloud native environment kubernetes or something or just on, on on a bare metal machine like you are responsible for running that piece of software and making sure that it's um is performing as you'd expect and is doing the right things and you're configuring it in the right way um whereas with agentless which is something we're providing in grafana cloud you don't have to do that like that is a managed service just like grafana cloud manages the Grafana stack and things like that and, and hosted metrics and hosted traces. The kind of burden of, of running that thing is, is sort of taken away, uh, which is very nice. But there's obviously trade-offs because, you know, um, with an agent set up, you're in control of your own destiny. You have access to more of the configurations that we don't give you access to in Grafana Cloud. So there's certain more advanced things that if you wanted to do, you'd have to run it yourself so that you have access to those configurations. So it depends on the use case what's more advantageous, um, but you know, the agentless solution is is a sort of providing you with a tool where you don't have to run, you know, run it yourself. I mean, would would you say that uh, the agentless is just pretty much a lower barrier to entry? So it might be that's that might be your first dip into all that observability and instrumentation. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I would say so. I, I think. Um, these things are extremely powerful. Like, you know, there's lots you can do, but, you know, often you want to, you know, you just want to ship metrics from one place to another. Yeah. And and a lot of the advanced use cases are something that you get into a little bit later. Um, so for sure, it's it's not the only, you know, it's, it's certainly you can go a long way with this, but it is also a case where you don't have to um, set up, have as much time setting things up. Like you can sort of, reduce that barrier that as you said like that time to seeing glorious grafana dashboards that have you know have uh exactly yeah because <laughs> so i think no i was just gonna say it's all about the glorious dashboard you know that's that's the that's the thing that everybody <laughs> likes to see you know it's like right. it's got a good dashboard pretty that's, charts that's yeah. awesome yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the mission really yeah 
So I think um, one of the one of the benefits of having an agent versus not having an agent is there's a lot of power and and customizability to decoupling that part of it, right? To having a separate thing that you can control. You already mentioned, Matt, that you can also, for example, filter out some metrics that get to agent and say, well, you don't need to pass that on. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to have like a like a toll booth along along that that road to to act as like a sort of checkpoint but we're also now all getting into the reverse of this question what is the advantage of having agent lists an agent list um kind of monitoring approach versus having an agent-based approach and definitely ease of use is one of them i mean if there's one fewer bit of infrastructure that i need to manage like who who wouldn't want that that's the ideal right mm -hmm. but then how does it actually work compared to how the agents work? How do things even get collected? Yeah, um, well, it's it's not dissimilar to running the agent yourself. Like we are running Grafana agents that scrape, um, you know, scrape addresses that you give us. And so typically in a, in a setup scenario, you have Grafana agent running and you might have it, there's different modes you can run it in to, for, to sort of give high availability. Um, and some sort of you know redundancy if things go down. Um, so you have your Grafana agent running, in which have a mode, and you, you kind of insert configs, scrape configs into the agent that says, you know, I want to scrape as I mentioned before this URL, and I want you to maybe do these transformations to that data, and then I want you to send it to this remote address, which is somewhere else on the internet, which is you know in this case a Grafana cloud hosted metrics instance. And so you can do the same thing yourself, but. In this case, how it's working is we're running it for you. And so, you know, we run the Grafana agent lots uh, in Grafana Cloud. You know, we're obviously dog fooding it and using it ourselves. And we're also in close contact with the team that develops the software. So there's some obviously expertise there. And so, you know, we're providing this service in a way that, you know, is obviously quite um, res resilient. You know, we're doing our best to make sure that things are always online and working. And you don't have to then worry about, you know, meta monitoring the agent yourself to check that, you know, data is running and things like that. You know, we do all that for you and also provide you those metrics to say, hey, yes, your your scrapes are working as expected and things like that. So, you know, you get the signals and you get the meta monitoring as well. Yeah. I mean, because that's that's what most developers are always looking for, too, is like the easy button. Right. Because there's already enough cognitive overhead, you know, with everything that we're creating. So it's like if somebody else can manage the uh, that back end stuff, that's all the better. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, as you've pointed out like you know if you if you can make a few fewer steps to sort of getting to that end goal then it's you know it's um it's really useful yeah and i should say so i'm actually... lazy i shouldn't speak for everyone else but... <laughs> every single <laughs> developer <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i don't think it's laziness it's or maybe i'm just justifying my own laziness but you know i prefer to think of it as being effective with my time you know why my would efficiency. i reinvent the wheel when it's already done for exactly. me yeah. but yeah. so like this is actually a misnomer it's not really agentless it, it, it's like hosted agents right it's agentless to you you know but, but so we, we don't we, <laughs> We don't call it agentless. Um, well, we we do, but we do, but but the product is called you know, <laughs> metrics endpoints, and so you know the the idea is that if you have what is typically you have you know your provide your tool slash metrics like that's you know, quite a common use case. Um, so we're calling it the metrics endpoint integration. So if you have one of those, it doesn't actually have to be slash metrics, but if you have an endpoint that's exposing Prometheus metrics, then you know that's a sort of acceptable target for us to go get you get the metrics and then put them into your Grafana cloud account uh, or stack. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can, you can do as you would do if you're running yourself. Okay. A couple of questions here. Also from Kalyani Sridhar Kakada. How easy is it to install Grafana and agents? Okay. Well, the first part of that Grafana, I've just done two office hours in the last month or so. One in, on how to install Grafana on Docker. And the second one was how to install Grafana on Kubernetes. So check those out because we go into detail on that. And regarding agent, actually next week, I'm going to have someone on to talk about Grafana agents. So we we will park that for now because <laughs> this episode is all about agent less. So stay, stay tuned. tuned for that one. Yeah. 
Kibambe Netambwe, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, <laughs> says agentless with Grafana is using APIs exposed by data sources like Prometheus or Alert Manager or even Loki. Um, so we it's so that when we're, we're pushing um, data into data sources, it's just Prometheus because this is it's just a Prometheus compatible service. So. Um, so within Grafana Cloud, you'll have a Prometheus data source that you know you have access to. It's your stack, and we push data into that. And then I guess on the other side, you have an API that's exposing metrics, and that is where we're scraping from. So um, it's not APIs exposed by the data sources, really. Like it's a, it's an API exposed by you or your cloud provider that you're you know running on, um, or you know SaaS platform that provides an API. We will scrape that. And then push it into your hosted metrics data source in Grafana Cloud. So hopefully that sort of clears up where you know where the data is flowing in from and to. So a question from me: <laughs> Is this yeah. actually using Prometheus Service Discovery? Um, so that's a good question. Um, the answer is no. Um, so I mean, without going into like too much detail around that, that the story of you know how we built this which maybe is interesting that we can go into later but um so it's not prometheus service query it's just a single url so we're not going from that url to other places and sort of crawling with service discovery mm -hmm. the places to, to target um which maybe is something we can look at in the future and we have looked at it in the past but um for this sort of release we wanted to do um metrics endpoint which is just exposing an endpoint um we thought that was a good use case, and there's lots of sort of as I say, SaaS providers that expose metrics in this way that would you know allow us to to create something that's valuable for people. Hmm. So, like okay, if you so had, which... had maybe a Kubernetes environment or something, and then uh, you had I don't know maybe you know ten pods of a certain instance are running, you'd you'd have to have something collecting and aggregating that data possibly that exposes a single endpoint that uh, we would call in on a, you know, periodically to pull that, scrape that, uh, those metrics. Right, yeah, I mean, I guess that's one of the, the powerful things about Prometheus is that you can sort of do that sort of like hierarchy yeah. and chaining where you can scrape things and then those things can be scraped by other things and things like that, yeah. yeah. Kind of a collector of collectors, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's turtles all the way down. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is this is agentless monitoring just the same as scraping would you say um yes it's it's the it's you know the, the fact we're, we're calling it agentless i guess is because we're not having you run an agent um but agents tip you know the, one of their main jobs is to scrape metrics and so like we are scraping metrics without you running an agent um and it's packaged into a, a you know integration so that you you can, as I said, like monitor, monitor how it's performing and things like that. And you kind of, you know, it's part of that connection suite within Grafana Cloud. All right, well, let's get into that. Let's get into the, the metrics endpoint integration, which is the agentless, agentless yeah. integration for Grafana Cloud. Um, yeah. I, I think this is really cool because I remember this was actually a hackathon for those who don't know, um, Grafana, we internally have, I think, a hackathon every quarter, is it now? And I think it's three, yeah. three per three, year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, three per year, almost yeah. almost every quarter. Yeah. And there's some really smart people <laughs> at Grafana. <laughs> and it I'm is always amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like there are a lot of things that actually end up being going from just just a just a hackathon project to being actually deployed in production. Uh, very recently, we talked about distributed tracing for Grafana Cloud K6. That was a hackathon project as well, and it didn't even it didn't even win. It didn't even place <laughs> at that quarter. <laughs> so, like that gives you an indication of the quality of some of these projects. Yeah, so I think yeah, this one was also a hackathon as well. The scrapers, you called it. Yeah, we called it scrapers, which uh, I guess is the name that is, it's just the way things go, right? Like you can't decide a name. So you're like, let's just call it this for now. And you're, I'm sure we'll name it later. I'm sure we'll come up with a better name. 
And then like for the longest time, that's just a name that everyone knows it by and we use because, you know, everyone understands that that means this thing. Um, so yeah, that was the sort of name that we came up with internally just to describe the project. Um, and yeah, it was sort of a hackathon we did uh, last year now. And we, you know, had the idea of, uh, so so, Grafon so within Grafana Cloud, we, we've been building these agentless integrations. So we have one for AWS CloudWatch, uh, which you know allows you to pull in your CloudWatch metrics into Grafana Cloud without having to do anything. And then we built another one for Confluent. And you know we thought they're really great. And they're, we've seen that people find them really useful because you don't have to run any of the infrastructure yourself to bring things in, which is, you know, as we've described many times, as, you know, it's really good. Um, but you know, we know like our work isn't isn't complete, right? There's more places we can add these things for, and you know that that takes time. What we wanted to do was say, well, what's the sort of common ground here? Like, if something's exposing Prometheus metrics, why can't we just say we'll, we'll go and collect it without building like a whole um, tailored experience or, or running exporters that do translation from one metric type to another? We just thought, well, let's if it's Prometheus compatible, I guess we can just bring it in. Um, and so that was the sort of idea of the project. And then we, we did a hackathon um, to you know to build that and it was quite successful. It was that hackathon that we started to play around with service discovery, which I mentioned you mentioned before. Um, and that was really cool. Uh, but we did find that it was adding more complexity and we, you know, the, we decided that let's just start with something simple uh, that works. And so we continued uh, working on it without service discovery. And there's a ticket on the backlog to pick up service discovery again. <laughs> nice. So did so did you all win? Uh I mean, you know, it's not not bitter, but uh, you know, unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we 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 um we got to the semi-finals. I think is is what it was. Um, so yeah. we went. We got through the first round. We had to go with more questions and. Was up late at night scrolling on Slack, like checking for updates, <laughs> and uh, yeah, sadly we didn't make it to the final. But um, yeah, nonetheless, it's really great, wow. fantastic that we got to continue working on it and actually take this hackathon idea to production. Like that's really exciting, and obviously we're all you know really happy with that. Yeah, I mean, and, and like Nicole said before, I mean there are some incredible uh, people that we have working in Grafana Labs and some incredible ideas that are kind of uh, generated out of these hackathons. So yeah, it's uh, you know just being yeah. involved and included in that—that's uh, always still a good thing. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the reverse yeah. happens too, if it makes you feel better. Like I, I was on a team that placed second for a hackathon and it was mm -hmm. an eBPF one. And that didn't actually end up going into production because now we have like Bela and the partnership with Cilium and stuff. So, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> the reverse can happen too. Something can right. be a really good idea, but for various reasons, we decide not to implement it. Yeah. Yeah. which is not the yeah, case sure. with with this one yes yeah we, i mean we thought that well, we've seen that people want this and so we you know we thought that the hackathon has given us a great opportunity to poc it and and see that something like this can work and so you know we've given the space to continue working on it polish things up and and get it out there for people so yeah it's really as you say it's, i guess the success is that we've managed to get this out there sure so before before we get into how it actually works, um, you you did mention a, two different kind of ways to use it. One is you said there's there's a, a generic HTTP integration, right? That that is just based on Prometheus metrics and and that being exposed. But then you also talked about integrations where they're for specific things, specific use cases. So mm -hmm. why why did you decide to do both? Yeah, so integrations are our sort of like out of the box um, monitoring, you know, solution for a platform, and they kind of build on open source, you know, components like dashboards and alerts. Um, and I guess just to, they they differ from data sources because they're they are monitoring the system itself, like you monitoring, for example, MySQL. You're monitoring how your MySQL instance is performing, whether it's healthy, whether it's you know performing at an acceptable level, how many people are using it things like that, you're actually monitoring the system rather than querying the data within it. So you're not querying your MySQL instance, you're monitoring your MySQL instance. Um, 
and so integrations are really are sort of like out of the box experience for getting set up and, and using these observability packages um, in a Grafana's opinionated way. So like Grafana recommends you use that, you know, you monitor these things um, to monitor your system. And so integrate those are what integrations are. And then you have the agent ones, which are ones where you do have to run the agent yourself. Um, and then the agentless ones, which are the ones that we um, host for you. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a case that for a lot of them, you, you you need to run the agent yourself because it needs to be, you need to collect the metrics within your internal system. Like yeah, the metrics aren't exposed outside of the internet. So there's no way for us to access them. Mm. So in that case, you need to run the agent yourself. Um, but as I said, like there is, you know, there's so many cloud providers and SaaS platforms that are actually exposing metrics on the internet. And so, you know, the fastest way for us to, give you access to pulling them in, in an agentless way was just to say, you know, give us the URL that's Prometheus compatible and we can, we can pull it in. Yeah, no, there was a integration for Supabase, which I saw that, uh, um, yeah. I forgot the the name, uh, was it, uh, uh Angel Lopez poll? Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure I said that wrong, of course, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, a great, uh, write up on, uh, using the integration for that. Yes, yeah, exactly. So we don't have an integration for Superbase specifically, which, you know, is something we, we would love to build. And I think, you know, it's definitely going to be on the roadmap. Um, but because it's not there yet, we don't want to stop you from using something like this to bring the metrics in. And so this sort of catch all gives you the opportunity to do that without having quite as much of a tailored experience and quite as much as I said, like out of the box dashboards and alerts that kind of can tell you what are the right things to look at for the, for this system um so it gets you it gets you you know along the way it's not as powerful as an integration for that specific technology but it definitely you know helps you along that that mm -hmm. journey um and so yeah and how you know he built work on this product uh he wrote up how to use superbase for this for this use case so superbase is a yeah. you know amazing cloud you know platform where you can do all sorts and run your application and then it has Prometheus metrics that you can pull in. And so you can be you a know, perfect example of why you want to use this integration. Mm. Yeah, it's nice and try Again, and pull it's... everything in uh, together into that, you know, that uh, mythical uh, single pane of glass to, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So Matt, let's get into this. Um, how, how do we use this new agentless integration? Yeah, sure. So should I demo how things work? Yes, go for oh. it. Demo. Cool. Demo. Okay, cool. So um, so I have my Grafana Cloud instance here, um, which is just what you'd have if you're using Grafana Cloud. And I also have this web application, which is running on Fly. So kind of just threw this like HTML page together to, you know, to demonstrate that. Fly is a cloud plat you know it's a kind of online platform where you can run containers as a service and has other functionality as well but yeah so i'm running my web service and i'm just saying hello but i'm sure there'd be something else here that's more interesting in a real use case um and you know on this web app as well i have like a, a slash metrics endpoint um where i can collect metrics um and it is authenticated so i need to put some credentials in here to show you um but yeah so there's some prometheus metrics here which i'm sure you've seen before um you know typical prometheus stuff nothing too interesting of itself but... zoom in a little bit just so we can see yeah sure so um specifics here aren't particularly important but it's a prometheus mm -hmm. endpoint that's returning some metrics and you're running this i'm running this in a you know in an environment where i'm not having to run any infrastructure myself so this provider is running the service you know i'm not having to run anything myself i'm just telling you what to run and I'm exposing some metrics. And so I guess at this point, I don't really want to run any infrastructure myself now just to collect the telemetry, right? I've got this far actually building the application. It'd be a shame to now have to run run more systems to collect the telemetry data. Um, so what I can do is I can go back to Grafana. Um, maybe I can zoom in here. Um, so you navigate to the integration, so it's connections, and then I'm going to go to metrics endpoints here. And I'm going to create a new scrape job. So as we've talked about before, we're scraping metrics from 
um, a public place. So I need to create a new scrape job that will collect the metrics from this web app here. So let's call it um, Grafana Office Hours. And then let's grab endpoint here. And then some credentials that I've put in. So we support two types of authentication right now. It's basic, which is you know username and password, or it's bearer where you can provide uh, an API key or something like that. Mm. So I'm going to put this in, and then we have to test the connection to verify that Grafana can access it. And that's it, all good. Cool. And then I click Save Scrape Job. And it saved it. And so now what will happen is Grafana will initiate the Grafana agent to go and scrape that that um, data from, from this web up here. Um, and so I can go to view dashboards, which you know, is just based off that username password thing. Um, yeah, don't normally call your metrics endpoint username password, but that's just an example. Um, and so we provide you with this dashboard that kind of gives you some visibility into the data uh, that you're collecting. So I have set up a scrape job before just to you know, verify that the, the demo gods are, are happy. But um, you know, metrics will start coming in here in a few seconds for this job. So I called the job office hours, I think it was, something like that. Uh, and so we'll see data coming in here. Um, and so you have Prometheus metrics at this point. So you're bringing in the metrics from the service that you've built or another cloud provider like Superbase we mentioned or something. And you can do with that whatever you would normally do if you weren't running the, if you if you were running the agent. So, you know, you can set up alerts, for example, or build dashboards. So I could go and build a dashboard here with, with the data that I've got. So I choose my Prometheus data source like it would be um wait for this to load it's querying some metrics if i could use like go routines or something and you know, i could put like a gauge here hmm. and start building dashboards and so you know this is the all of the things you can do if you're running the agent yourself but um now you don't have to run that piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the other nice thing is that, you know, because these are, we have these cloud integrations, you know, I know this is a Go application because I can see these Go metrics here. I can actually go, uh, let's keep this dashboard for now. It's ours. I can go to back to Connections, I can go to and search for Go. Okay. Install the dashboard and then install the integration, sorry, which I've done, and then view dashboards. And you can actually, you know, start seeing metrics about your Go application. So you can see that's coming in here for the Grafana Office Hours job, which I've just selected. You can see metrics are just coming in. And so it kind of, you know, in the case with the metrics endpoint integration, we, we we haven't built you any of these dashboards and things, but because you're using Go, you can then use the Go integration and sort of build on top of that. So these things stack together quite nicely. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's a good, it's not just getting the metrics in, which is, it's good, but it's not enough, right? Like you need to build dashboards and understand like what to do with that data and visualize it in the right way. And then, you know, in the case of this Go application, I can use the, the integration um, as I would. Yeah, that's super nice. The integration there to be able to give you a starting point for a dashboard. I mean, you know, that way build on the shoulders of giants. But uh, but I was going to ask, though, um, I'm kind of curious with your Grafana cloud here. Um, is this uh, like a pay feature for the scraping or is this something that uh, with the free tier that you can have access to? Yes. Um so it's part of the free tier. All of the integrations are part of, you know, the Grafana Cloud experience. So you don't pay any additional things mm. for that. The only <laughs> thing you pay for is the metrics that you're bringing in, right? So if you're bringing in lots of metrics, right? You, you know, you will pay for that as you would in any other way if you're sending them yourself. Um, and you know, of course, network costs and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, you know, it's all part of the package, which is really really exciting, and you know, means you can, as you said, get started. A lot easier and you can kind of use grafana in that way uh, without having to 
pay for a running app, running yeah. infrastructure like the agents. Yeah. No, that's nice. I mean, you know, especially for like a home lab or for a learning mm. scenario or something like that, where you can play around with this stuff and not worry about getting a, you know, a big bill. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, that's, yeah, we've all been there and stung by that and it's, you know, it's never fun. Exactly. Yeah. Talking to you, AWS. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just got flagged. Um. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -oh. <laughs> so matt you're speaking of cost one of the things that you mentioned was that with um with with a grafana agent or, or some other agent one of the things that you can do is that you can filter out some of those metrics to prevent exactly what we were just talking about so that you don't have to pay for all of those metrics how would you do that in, in this new agentless integration or yeah. Can you uh, that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, good question. Um, so, with our with our normal integrations that aren't agentless, we have actually thought about this question a lot, and we've now we're now um, actually building experience around just sending the metrics that you need to do the observability on that solution or the monitoring on that that solution. So, even though your system might send ten thousand metrics, if only a hundred of them are actually used on a dashboard the kind of configuration that we provide to you says you only need to send these hundred. And so you're not paying for the cost of sending the metrics, oh. which is really nice. Um, with the agent less one, like the metrics endpoint, we don't have that functionality right now. So we will collect all of the metrics that you are, are kind of exposing on that endpoint and put them into your Grafana cloud account. So you will you know, be charged for the metrics that you put in. Um, now, having said that, I know there's the adaptive metrics project within Grafana Cloud that will actually look at the metrics you are you know, using and querying, and it will tell you, hey, you're not using these. You should not keep storing them and stuff. So that's solving it on the other side. Um, and it's, you know, this sort of thing is definitely what we're interested in feedback around, around, you know, how can we provide you with a better experience with with not having access to all of the, the dials and switches that a Grafana agent, if you're running yourself, would provide. But um, yeah, that, that's the answer right now. So there is ways in Grafana Cloud, but not natively within the integration right now. But we, you know, we'd love to hear if people really, you know, like that. Yeah, that would be nice. Just yeah, yeah. Just just grab what you actually are using, so you don't have right. to pay for the overhead of all the extra stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like GraphQL for metrics. Um, right. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's, yeah, there's lots of ways you, I like you that, could, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what had to happen to get to this point? What were the, the requirements and like pre prereqs, I guess? Yeah, sure. So you need a publicly available URL that's, um, you know, HTTPS authenticated. Um, so you need to have some auth on it. It needs to be HTTPS and it needs to be publicly available. So we can't scrape things that are within a private network or a private cluster. It has to be something that's you know exposed on the internet. Right. Um, and then you need to have a Grafana Cloud account and submit a scrape job like I showed you. And that is um, pretty much it, I think. So there's not a you know, whole lot. You basically just need a Grafana Cloud stack and something that's exposing metrics um, and you can bring it in. So I, I think that's the prerequisites. I kind of covered it off a bit too fast in my head, but I think that's it. <laughs> um, so yeah, something running somewhere publicly, a Grafana Cloud account to bring it in, and then obviously the capacity within your um, allowance to store the metrics. Nice. And how you showed us how to add the, the dashboards, but what if we wanted to add some alerts after the fact? Yeah, sure. Um, and that's you know certainly a valid use case and that's you know something that we expect people to do as i said this integration is just pulling in the metrics which in of itself is you know extremely valuable but it only gets you part of the way there so we would say if there's an integration um that for the tool you're you're exposing um then you know hopefully that integration is available and you we, we'd, we'd love you to use that because it's an out of the box experience that provides you with dashboards and alerts and probably some Prometheus recording rules as well. And it will give you what we, you know, our opinionated solution for monitoring that system. Um, 
but you're also able to go it alone and, and build your own dashboards and your own rules as you would with any other metric that you have in your Grafana account. So you can mm -hmm. go to explore or you can go to the alert page, build an alert, and then it, you know, it will work based off that. Now, is there any community around the integrations themselves? And, and sorry, I, I just thought about it now. So it's like going yeah. back because, uh, I mean, we have the community for dashboards where people have created dashboards and then, you know, uh, yeah. contribute that. But what about the integrations? Yeah. So the integrations are mainly built around those open source components. So the open source dashboards, uh, I know the team contributes a lot back to those and then we bring them into those integrations. So they're often built around like, the open source mix-ins themselves and we kind of wrap those you know wrap those inside other things like we provide you know snippets that you will attach to your agent config and that will mm -hmm. kind of that will give you all that you need to add to your agent to tell it to scrape the right thing um but yeah they are fundamentally built around these open source tool uh, dashboards and things yeah cool. which is nice right because then you you know you can users can contribute and make fixes to dashboards and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I want to talk about uh, kind of go back to the question earlier and I want to talk limitations because mm. this obviously looks really cool. It's all um, it, it's a lot easier than having to, you know, set up agent yourself on your own infrastructure and manage that infrastructure going forward. But when in what cases would agentless integration not be the way to go? Sure. Um, yeah. So we so we recognise that it's not for everyone. It's not for every use case right now. Um, I should say. So if your metrics aren't exposed on the internet, as I've said, if they're like in a Kubernetes cluster, for example, mm -hmm. uh, or in some sort of private network, then we can't access those right now. So there's no way for us to collect them and ship them and scrape them to your um, Grafana account. So it's not it's not a suitable use case for, for for this integration right now. You'd need to run the agent yourself, collect them, and push them to Grafana Cloud yourself. Um, and so that's just one of the limitations that we that we have right now. Um, the other thing that we kind of talked about at the start is when you want to have more control over the agent config. So mm -hmm. when you want to drop metrics or you want to relabel them, drop certain labels or add certain labels, which can be useful for things like access control or enriching the data um you know that then you also need to um run the agent yourself so you have access to the agent config um so if you want to do more you know more advanced sort of things with your with your data before it ends up in grafana cloud then um we don't have any support for that so it's it's that's sort of a disadvantage of of doing that um mm -hmm. of, of the agent in, agentless integration sorry um yeah, so so those are limitations right now, and and um, you know obviously we you know interested to to hear how people are using it so that we can build in controls like that if if they're useful. I wouldn't think of that as a limitation. I think of that as a uh, just a more you know enhanced yes. uh, requirements uh, or <laughs> advanced yes. requirements. You know, for sure, for sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it's. When you add more control, right? You're like more controls, then it, it becomes a well, not always, but you know, there's a potential to add complexity. And for someone that maybe hasn't seen these things before, might not know what the right option is, for example. Yeah. And so, like, we this is an out of the box sort of way to collect metrics um, without you know having to know all the bells and whistles and, and, and knobs to turn and things like that. Yeah. But do you see, like, in, in the future, do you see it as a possibility that, you know, we will go from hosting Grafana agent for people to them being able to directly configure that Grafana agent instance themselves? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's certainly something that we, you know, could, can, could um, have a conversation about. I mean, I, um, I think at the end of the day we're building agent configs from the data the user gives us which is like the credentials and the url so we could give more access to some of the bells and you know some of the the dobs and, and you know configuration that's available but um you know we also need to 
man this is a managed service right so we need to make sure that the right settings are applied in in certain yeah. scenarios and um we don't want to give too much access that can degrade performance right and things like that so if we were to add more more available settings it would be in a case that we think that you know this is going to make it more more valuable for more use cases but not cause things to you know degrade in performance or you get gaps in your data or you know anything like that you know and actually gaps in your data that's that's something i was uh, just thinking about so like uh with this uh is this so? This is something that you wouldn't probably want to use for like uh, you know ephemeral services. Like uh, you know, I I always keep leaning back on the Kubernetes things. Mm. So like you know, like a, a job or something like that, some sort of a cron job that you know that pod is only going to exist for a short period of time, and then if it happens to be that it's not picked up on the you know when uh, our agents our remote agents are polling, you know, you could lose some of the data at the tail end of that, the life. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, yeah, that is, I guess that depends on on how you're exposing the metrics, right? If you have mm -hmm. something that's scraping all of your jobs and then composing that into True, a metric. True, then that's alive then, forever, yeah. You, yeah. Right, you could do that. So really yeah. the end point that you're scraping should sort of be long-lived, um, yeah. you know, long-lived URL that we can always hit. And it will always, uh, you know, return some metrics. Um, and I guess, you know, when things are more ephemeral, that's maybe where you would use something like service discovery, um, mm -hmm. which again is a case where you want to run the agent yourself. Right. Since you mentioned the performance aspect, how how does that work? Um, is are the Grafana agent? instances shared across different users or do you do we spin one up for every user yeah so we're, we're running like a, a cluster of grafana agents and we're kind of sharding the jobs that are created across those agents yeah so i mean that's um, how it works essentially um and obviously you have the isolation across different clusters and things like that and you know it's there's a quorum of grafana agents that are running to jobs are shared out appropriately and things like that. Yeah. All the woes of a multi-tenant setup, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously different approaches. Um, yeah. Yes. This is what we've, we've on. So what are some of the plans in the future for metrics endpoint? Like where do you want to take this? Yes. Um, that's a good question. So we, we just launched it, uh, a couple of weeks back and we're obviously very happy in seeing how people are using it um and you know we're, we're quite happy with what the, the this feature provides like we think it's it's um you know it's providing a useful feature so in terms of like tidying things up or providing a few more you know settings like we've discussed mm -hmm. that is certainly we've discussed um you know being able to configure like scrape intervals for example is something that we've thought about um but yeah, we, we, what I guess there's a couple of things. First of all, we you know, we're really interested in finding out how people are using it, and then um, would love to hear the feedback from them around what's useful and what we change. And so, you know, things like this are really great opportunity for people to share their feedback with us on how they can, you know, how we can make this more useful to them. And we're still very much, you know, in the sort of analysis stage of seeing how things are, seeing how people are using it. On the other side of that, um, sort of tangentially, like. This technology that we've we've built to scrape these endpoints, we want to kind of reuse for specific cloud providers. So, mm -hmm. if we see that cloud providers are you know exposing Prometheus metrics that are, you know, a lot of people are using, then we'd like to build an integration around that. And so we can say, for example, Superbase, which was the blog post, uh, we can build the Superbase integration, which provides more detail around how to get set up, you know, links to get getting API keys or the right access controls and things like that. And it will kind of build on this technology, but it will provide a more tailored experience for the specific cloud provider. And so that's where we think, you know, this might be a useful next step um, to not just extend this, but to kind of use it um, for other, you know, for other integrations, for other names. Superbase are so cool. Incidentally, they, they use Grafana and Prometheus and they do performance benchmarks with K6. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it's all um, 
It's all circle, I guess, isn't it? You know, from yeah, yeah, open right. source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you can you show us um, the available integrations right now? Yes, of course. Yeah. So uh, let me go back to. So if you, as I say, if you go to Grafana, you go on the left, you go to connections. Then, you know, you can filter here to just the integration. So some of this includes data sources and apps. You can filter to just integrations. And so we have you know, many integrations, mainly the, you know, there's ones around like databases or hosts like Linux, mm -hmm. Windows, uh, databases like MySQL, CouchDB here, Cassandra. So there's lots of sort of foundational tools that you'll be using within your platform. Um, and then there's you know, other ones like Azure, we have one for GCP and one for AWS as well. So there's really quite, you know, an expanding list of these. And, you know, as I said before, we know there's more work to do into building more. And obviously we're building as many as we can, but um, you can use the metrics endpoint when it's not there, but there is an available URL to go and scrape them. Um, yeah. And so Confluent Cloud is another example of an agentless integration. So you don't need to run an agent yourself. We'll go and fetch the metrics from Grafana Cloud. Um, but for other ones, they provide you with the information on how to set up the agent yourself. So if I go to etcd, mm. you can, there's some, in, you know, there's some helpful scripts to install the agent, and then it tells you what snippets you need to add to your agent config. You can choose whether you want to um, just, just send Grafana Cloud the metrics that are included in the dashboards. So these are all these metrics that we need, or we can turn that off and just say, send me everything, you know, and, and then you'll get all of the metrics that SCD is returning. But in this case, you know, we just want to do that. You can rename the the host name of um, label on the metrics. So there's kind of useful niceties that you get from following this sort of handheld experience. Um, some, you know, and then you can test the connection to see if the metric is coming in, and then you can install the dashboards. You actually can't install them until you've verified the connection's working. Um, oh, no, sorry, you can, but it's because I've already installed it. So, yeah. And then, as I said, you get dashboards. I'm not running etcd right now, but you would you'd have a, a, a set of um, panels here with lots of data flowing through. Nice. Yep. Yeah. So... Yeah. Plenty on here. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to say it's a good list there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned yeah. you mentioned ahead, before sorry. that if there's a, a use case that people have that they really want to kind of plus one for you to work on an integration for, that you would really love to hear that. What's the best way for people to give feedback? Yeah, I mean, the community Slack channel, um, we have a hashtag integrations. Um, it's a great place for us to hear that feedback. And so we're obviously monitoring that to see, um, to see you know, what people are saying. And so that's a good place um, to do that. Probably the best place. Yeah. Awesome. Is this the community forum? Uh, so that's, you, that's the community Slack. Uh, so that's where oh, I guess we're... Slack. Okay. Yeah, so we're, that's where we're kind of keeping an eye now uh, on the community Slack. The, obviously, uh, on the community forum, I know that we're also looking. Um, so that is also a good place. But um, either or works. We're obviously keen to hear you know, what integrations people want and you know what features they want for the metrics endpoint integration. Awesome. Yeah, we know folks that are on the uh, community, uh, the uh, discourse, uh, on the forum so we mm -hmm. can probably route the request to you if uh if it's yes. not directly picked up yeah that sounds great yeah be pinging over our channel yeah and also yeah. um if people want to know just more information about how to how to use this new feature where yeah. should people go yeah so we have a documentation page which kind of describes um, how to get set up and some of the requirements that I mentioned before but it just kind of you know, is in uh, text form and, and it kind of goes into things a bit more detail so there's a doc page which describes that and then we did the blog post around how to set this up with Superbase which we think is a great example of where you might want to use this there's obviously others and the kind of experience for grabbing authentication might be different but Fundamentally, it's the same flow of creating a scrape job and giving us the, the URL. And then 
again, third, third, like if you want to, you know, ask more questions, then the community Slack is a great place to do that. Again, like, you know, we're happy to have a chat on there and hear more. Awesome. Great. That's awesome. Thank you so much for, for coming on and, and talking about this. Um, I thought it was a, a really cool idea. Slightly disappointed that it's not actually agentless <laughs> and and magically works all the time for every use case. But I, I do still think that it's, it's very cool. And I think the easiest way to get started, which is the whole point of Grafana Cloud, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah for sure. Yeah. And that you can use it in the free tier as well if you want to just experiment yeah. with it and learn about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do want, if for people who do want to hear about Grafana Agent anyway, and kind of the reverse of today's episode, which is the different ways in which Grafana Agent would be the better choice than this agentless yeah. integration, <laughs> then stay tuned for next week where we will be talking about just that. We'll, we'll see both sides, right? Yeah. <laughs> of no, we're not going to be. Yeah, we're not going to be spending next week throwing shade on Matt uh, and this okay. whole agentless <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> Are we? Uh, no. <laughs> It's, no, you, know, <laughs> you tell you say that when he's already gone paul oh, so yeah, can't get mad at us. <laughs> he's still alive right now like <laughs> i'm gonna be, that could be watching next week <laughs> asking <laughs> questions in the chat Why oh no he's here? gonna exactly. heckle yeah, i knew there, it there we go. Yep. <laughs> might as well block him now <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Matt, for, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And I guess have a good weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you.